<laughs> I don't know if we can put this in the show. <laughs> oh, we are. This should be good. <laughs> Floppy, this isn't it? <laughs> I would hope so, yeah. <laughs> Unless the sight of this shirt is a. Uh, Imagine if you're it. just listening to this and not actually watching it, and it starts with me just saying, a bit floppy, this. Especially after it's last. Definitely uh, what's starting. After last episode. <clears throat> well, after the last episode, I went on my phone um, while we were having a. Uh, sit down and a chill and a break and that and the first advert that came up was for it was a clip from um i don't know what it's is it called sex clinic on channel four or e4 or something and is basically that, is that a bit like um embarrassing bodies something like that yeah like people go with like sexual health questions and stuff um and it was about a guy finding out he only had one testicle he's only ever born with one which is fine they say that Facebook doesn't listen in. I've never had testicles, not met, you know, as my recommended. I hate adverse. to think now, after what we spoke about. What Google thinks of you. Yeah. You you, you and your water sports fetish and your... <laughs> uh, and your, your, your prostitution ladder climbing. Yeah. <clears throat> my illustrious career in prostitution <laughs> <laughs> and boxing, <clears throat> in boxing career, yeah. war heroics. <laughs> well, John, uh, John Wayne war heroics. John Wayne war heroics. Yeah. Cow, cowboy prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> we um, we need to start this, this really, don't we? Um, I thought we already had. I'll do. We'll start with that. Because <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say, imagine you know you, you have prostitutes walking along the street, but they're riding horses. <laughs> that's there. That's how you know. Yeah. I, how can you tell she's a prostitute? Is it well, the mini skirt in the full cowboy attire riding a horse? <laughs> prostitute. Yeah. Yeah. We've just done a Lombardo. So I was about that. But anyway, yeah. You wanted to talk about. Um, well, you mentioned about like the the testy guy. The sex clinic. The sex TV clinic. Show. Still floppy. <laughs> I'll get it off. Do you want to get on the hell? sex clinic? That's, yeah, that's not the right time to say that. No, we can't talk about a sex clinic and then follow that up with that's still floppy. Meh. <laughs> 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 um, and it's, it, it's those kind of shows when it's like somebody will go on and then they'll say, I, I've been too embarrassed to go to the doctors about this condition <coughs> they have. It's like, so you've gone on national telly to kind of say that you've got an infected willy. Yeah. Like, mm. but the th- what do you think the consequences are? Like, maybe some people will do it and think, oh, well, you know, I've brought awareness to, there is to that. this. Like, but yeah. you're going to go back into society and you go into a pub or a club or whatever, you will always be known as that person with... That the the mushroom willy or the <laughs> yeah everyone on national TV is seen yeah that you grow sweet corn out your bum hole or whatever, <laughs> exactly the weird and wonderful thing yeah I do find those shows mental like I find um what's the dating show one that's what I was gonna say and I was trying to remember Naked Attraction yeah like that you'd never seen it before had you until I was you round wa- at yours you watched it at ours and it is the <laughs> until I'd gone on it and uh, was. <laughs> Was it consist- turned up. What's, what's this all about? <laughs> this is where, where's the lift when I come down? Why aren't? Yeah, where's, um, where's all these girls with the the, the whole no light? You know, like where's Silla Black gone? I don't I don't <laughs> remember any of this. Um, but yeah, Naked Attraction. Like, if you're, I don't know how to what you w- word to use. If you're like game for a laugh, and you don't take yourself too seriously and. You don't need to go on a sex clinic TV show because of your exploding penis or whatever. I suppose it's a bit of a laugh. If you do, if you if you're of the 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 mentality of I don't give a fuck, I don't care if people see me get me cock out on telly, it's probably a good laugh. Yeah. And I reckon the selection process for that is a bit easier to get on than take me out. 
what do you think the selection process know. is? Do you I don't just know. have to send the pictures of you? You've got to send pictures you of you. You must have to reply naked. Can, can you imagine being in the office? Like, like, is it on Channel 4? Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> you're at Channel 4 and it, and you're working on that show and it's like, right, okay, so you've got to vet the um, all the contestants, people applying for the show. So you're there getting these emails. So your job literally is just getting pictures of naked people all day. You have day. to categorise because at the beginning of each show it says, they say, like... Say, say you go on it, right? <laughs> What's the matter? What's the matter? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can put this in the show. <laughs> oh, we are. This should be good. <laughs> Imagine... <laughs> <laughs> on Naked Attraction, but the theme of the show was dwarfs. <laughs> and you know how it goes, and they like the section. It goes down and it goes up and it just goes. But it's just there. <laughs> <laughs> or there is, imagine there's only one. Imagine that's not the theme. Imagine there's only one, one little person. And it goes up, it goes dun, 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 and it gets to the cocks, and then it's just like the whole, like just up, to, it's above wee man's head. <laughs> He's just stood there, like, fuck's sake, guys. <laughs> I don't think we can put that in, but we'll try. Um, but at the beginning of every show, they kind of say, um, you know, say you're on it, they're like, right, so Tony, you've you've told us what you like in uh, in women. And we've now got six people that have the characteristics that you like, or you've said that you like. So not only are you looking at just people naked emailing in, going get me on the telly, you're you're having to tick a box to go, you know, nipple piercings. Yeah. So what was your criteria? Fore, foreskin. <laughs> what's thing. your criteria for 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 what you're looking for? Someone just puts naked. <laughs> <laughs> fit yeah <laughs> I want someone fit but like the thing is like we, like if if you've watched it like quite a few episodes you'll realise that Anna Richardson hosting it asks the fucking funniest questions so like they'll be there going she's just like it goes up it goes dun, 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 dun. Boom, 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 boom. So what do you think of Blue's bollocks? And they kind of go, oh, bit droopy. <laughs> I, made, I made sure I drunk that. <laughs> I bit, used that word, bit droopy. drunk that. <laughs> um, <laughs> not, not swallowed that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and like, oh, oh, well. But the thing is, what I always find funny is like, that the reasons that they... Because they have to reject a yeah. person each time, don't they? So there'll be somebody there. There'll be, say a girl goes on it, and there's like six people naked. Five of them have got massive cocks. The other one's got a massive, massive uh, bollocks. Yeah, <laughs> it's me. Twisted, it's twisted. me with me massive bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Just whoop, like a party balloon. <laughs> with pop <Popeye> balls. <laughs> pop balls, because I ate too much spinach. But, um... They, 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 they'll get. They'll always get rid of the little tiny twonky on the co- the end. They'll just be like, "Oh, so why are you getting rid of yellow?" And she'll go, "Well, it's got hairy toes." Yeah, and you're like, "Hmm, yeah." I, I, I can I'm, just. I feel his personality. I'm, get, I'm not getting the vibe that they can keep up with me on a night out. What from his cock? Yeah. Is, is little cock downwards. That's what's giving you the vibes. And or, or it, there's always a reason. <clears throat> it's like it's like when they're you know when they're on Take Me Out, and they do that that video, and oh. they're like they're like oh I'm I'm Alex I'm from Sheffield and yeah. blah, blah. and then they're like, you know they turn the lights off and stuff. They're like oh I work in marketing or whatever, and then they'll go pew, and then they're like, well. Paddy goes over. He's like, "So why did you get rid of him? You you turned your light off when he said he works in marketing. Well, Paddy, um, if he's if he's working in a job that's good and pays well, that means that he's not going to be able to give me the attention and the time that I need and deserve. It's like what? Because he's got a good job. 
Like, oh, oh, they'll they'll get rid of him because, like, oh, I do a lot of charity work for dogs. It's like, oh, well, boom, I, boom, 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 boom. oh, I prefer cats. It's like, well, that's it's, that's nothing to do with his personality. That's completely unrelated. Like, he's doing a nice thing here. Yeah, he's, and you're like, and it, I just find like that, like that. It's it, it's the, it's the, it's an excuse, and it? it's bollocks. But like they give a reason. The, there'll be one was like, hi, my name's Mac Doom. <laughs> Just imagine like, you <laughs> really hate the name Mark. Yeah. Oh well, I I once knew someone called Mark, and he was a bit of a dick in school. I was like, yeah, well, that was twenty years ago, love. Like, do you want to do you want to drop that? But like, imagine if you come out the lift, and you just kind of like, you know, they come out and they walk up and they're like, they what, what song, the- whatever song they come out to, they're like doing a bit of a bit of a cheese sleaze ball sort of point in that. Imagine if they just kind of went. Oh no! <laughs> and just turned the girl's light off. Oh no! And then just walked off. And imagine that—that'd be You'll so do. funny. Come on, let's go. In it, yeah. Like, what song would you come out to if you were coming? If you were coming out the lift on, take me out. I'd come out to Triple H's theme tune. Would you do the full? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sp- yes. Yeah, spray the water in the air <laughs> all over the birds. Yeah. Birds. <laughs> all over the girls. Sorry. It's 2021. Yeah. Just spraying, like, in the first, like... So do you want to go out on a date? <laughs> Just spat water in my face. What would you say? My name's Tony, and I'm... And I like... <laughs> Blowjobs! <laughs> Cowboy prostitutes! <laughs> Imagine that's how... What, what, do you, what do you like to do outside? Like, you know, is, is your thing? It's like, I'd... I'd just go to uh, City Sauna. I just or um, is. is that the one? The one that had the had the um, documentary. It is, yeah, it's closed down or, or moved or something because that building's been renovated. I don't know what what you'd go into for that. And uh, yeah, going in and you got like the um, hot tub there, just still with like full coal, of, coleslaw, full of coleslaw and, and beans custard, and, and stuff. custard. Yeah, what a I've told you before. Was. I've told you to stop putting food in the jacuzzi. Yeah, imagine <laughs> coming out. Yeah, coming out to Triple H's. I don't know what I'd come out to. I asked you that question like as though I had an answer already in mind, and I think whatever I say won't be as good as Triple H's entrance, <laughs> unless it was like "No Way Jose." Yeah, and just, just getting everyone do, to do a conga. Do the conga, that'd be amazing. Um, but yeah, like, on, on, but coming back to Naked Attraction, like, <laughs> about to say you've got to have some bollocks to do that, haven't you? <laughs> but like, you might not have that guy went on telly. There's only one. Didn't know he only had one. Yeah. But fair play. But, like, I don't know at what point you think you're going to find... Do you think Do you think any of them ever go on there thinking, I want to find the love of my life? Or do you think, well, if they're game enough to go on telly and get the, the minge out, they'll probably, probably go for it. I think you know you, I mean? I think you're kind of barking up the wrong tree. If you think you're going to go on a TV show, you might do, and good luck if you do. But realistically, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't Are you know. Gonna find, I mean, you, arguably, you would find somebody at least close to being on your wavelength. Yeah, you're both like you're, you not, have you're to, not asked about you what have, people think of your bodies. I yeah, suppose. you have to be confident enough, like you say, in your own body. You've got to have thick skin. Is that one of the things you'd put on your your list for what you like? <laughs> Thick skin. Thick skin. Or oh, just skin. If they've got some skin. I mean, it's a start. They've got leprosy. <laughs> like you and your knee. Yeah. <laughs> leper's knee. I went, leper's to a lep- knee. went to a leper's island once. What? There's no lepers there. Went to a leper's island? Mm. It's on holiday once. You know, one of them day trips you get on a boat. And Where go to was a this? Le- Crete or somewhere. They're like a disability cruise or something. <laughs> like, just, yeah, it's just uh, just get there. There's just people with like no arms and just falling off. Just like Lepers looking like, Island. Yeah, where was it? Greece? Did you say somewhere like that? Somewhere like that. Oh, yeah. Lepers Island at Greece or somewhere <laughs> like that. You'd never, you'd never think that I worked for a travel company. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just getting my phone out of my pocket and I'm going to have a quick look at this. Lepers, I, what was there? It was like literally, there was nothing. It's like a little ghost town. It's the ghost of the lepers because <laughs> they've all died of leprosy. I put lepers in and Lepers Island has come up straight away. Leper colony. 
Is leprosy still a thing? I imagine it hasn't completely disappeared. It's just out of fashion at the moment. Yeah, things coming up. Leper Conley. Lazaret. St. Lazarus. Imagine know. trying to, like, you, you, I've been The banished. abandoned Greek island shrouded in mystery. That sounds like it, doesn't it? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Spin a longer. No, that's not it. What is it? It's like something you'd ask someone on Naked Attraction to do. Spin a longer, yeah. Do a spin a longer for us. Spin a longer. It's a village in North Eastern Crete. That's probably it. That'll be the one, won't it? Is it on an island? Yeah, and there's nothing there. Just, yeah. Imagine you were, like, put on the island, and you're like, I, why have they banished me to this island? Just because i got leprosy. And then you try and swim back, but then your arms fall off. <laughs> and then get eaten by sharks. Because I'm assuming sharks are everywhere in the Mediterranean, even though I've never seen one. Um, I don't know what to just say to <laughs> To be honest, you're talking about people's arms falling off as they're swimming just... away from a Greek island. <laughs> imagine, imagine you, <laughs> the RNLI go out on a training day and there's just a bloke holding his own arm in the air for help. <laughs> just swimming. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I, can't, I keep swimming in circles here. Can you come and pick me up? <laughs> they come to lift him out of the water and he, oh no his legs oh, are still there oh no uh, it's like they crash dummies <laughs> we'll, just just him, we'll just pop him back together yeah like a, like an action man just. <laughs> so the head's just got an arm sticking out <laughs> and they, but the head's down on where the leg should be imagine that on how confusing like a, that'd be like on naked Mr Potato Man isn't it? <laughs> on naked attraction <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, he's, head. He's, he's got a, he's got a head and an arm at the bottom <laughs> he's got a knob for a head <laughs> Uh, <laughs> just reminded me um, with the, with the swimming on what the last <laughs> episode you <laughs> were speaking about injuries and <clears throat> did, did I ever tell you about my swimming injury? Nope, but you're about to. Yep. So I wouldn't be very good, you know, trying to swim away from a leper's island because I'm not a very good swimmer. Because your arms are constantly falling off. Exactly, and um, <laughs> so. Um, I worked for a very established swimming brand once upon a time. Yeah. And I thought, because I don't swim, I'll get into it. Like, I can swim. I was about to say, can, you can swim. I can I've swim. I've seen you swim. But I'll get tired after one leg. Yeah, it's not very good. So um, I go into an olympic size pool, which, you know, I... How is Olympic big? 25 metres? 50. 50. What, 50 metres? 50 metres. Is it? I always thought it was 25 and they did like four. No, no. It's 25 metres across. Oh, is it? Because sometimes you open the lens <coughs> to do that, but no, it's 50 metres. Bearing in mind, when I did my swimming badges, um, I got to about 48 metres, and then they got the big hook and fished me out. <laughs> <laughs> they got you the, the Todd rod. <laughs> just went, right, get the net. Let's I was get him furious. In. Got you in a landing net. I've only got net. my 25 metre badge. <laughs> get which your I, landing which net. still got sewn onto my... Um, my, my onto my, your budgie smugglers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was like... Do, do you have your pyjamas on for that run? Or is it just... You know, <laughs> Just in case you ever fall off a boat in your pyjamas. Yeah. I um, was... We never did that with the pyjamas. Yeah, no. I did. And um, so I thought, yeah, do you know what? I'll get into it because I'm having to tell a lie to people all the time. It's like, oh, are you a swimmer? Because of my height and for some reason my shoulders. I'm like, no. Swimming my, shoulders. Yeah. And my boss was like, no, just just lie. They gave me a time that I could do 100 metres. I'm a 100 metre freestyler. And you start to believe your own like story. <laughs> so you're telling people, like, yeah, yeah. So I do this and do this. And it's like... I can't even swim 50 metres. Well, that's Todd Rod. Yeah. <laughs> that's my that's my swimming experience is, yeah, being fished out by a Todd Rod. <laughs> Someone getting the landing net. And so anyway, I was like, one day after I finished work, I'm, like, I'm going to go down to the pool and I'm going to do some lengths. And, <laughs> and I remember like, right, you know, um, getting in the pool and I'm swimming. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't even know if I've done one length. <laughs> and I'm swimming, I'm like, Man, I'm, I am done. Goosed. And then, and then, like, so I, I'm kind of like pushing myself along, you know, the lane rope, but like trying to discreetly do it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. just to get me to 50 meters. So still, after all these years, I still require a Todd rod to get to get me along. <laughs> but then I get a rest, about a five minute rest at the end. I'm like, 
I didn't think you could sweat in a swimming pool, but I did. <laughs> and I'm like, right, let's do this again. Let's go back. So I started swimming, and then halfway along, about 25 metres in, my hamstring goes. Pulled your hammy swimming? Yeah. And bearing in mind, these pools are about three metre deep, which for me, I feel very uncomfortable with anything beyond two metres. So it well, feels like it's about 30 metres. Yeah, because if it's two metres, at least you can still have your head above water. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm going to die here. I'm going to drown to death. This is me. So so I'm like dragging myself yet again along the lane rope. I'm like, oh. and, but my leg is just seizing up. Like so, but, in that. And I'm like, oh. and I get to the end. And I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> I'd realistically done about 60 metres. And I'm like, yeah, I'm done. And I remember going to the dressing room, like the changing rooms bit. And I sat there with a towel over my head looking like Taz. And I'm just like, man, I don't feel so good. And I'm like, starting to feel like dizzy. I'm going to have to go. And it's getting too close to closing time. And I'm like, still just there thinking I need to get dressed and showered and get out of here before I get locked in. So I go to the cubicles and I'm like, I don't, I don't feel so good. And... And I'm sat on the toilet, but seat down, like, you know, just on top of it. again, Getting yourself together. Yeah, and I'm like, man, why do I feel this bad? And I'm like, I start to feel a bit dizzy. And then I just stand up to walk. I was like, right, I just need to get home. And I get, I stand up, I take about two steps and turn around, just throw my guts up. Ugh. My subway, I'd eaten a subway for dinner. That's your probably say, was it within but, two hours? No, it was about four hours ago, five oh, hours ago. I'd like full, to. Full chicken tikka, like me on the way home last time. Yeah, and and and, and that was, <coughs> and I was like, "Yep, I'm done with swimming. <laughs> That's my swimming career." Yeah, I wasn't well in the car last time we drove. It wasn't for me, but it was from um, this neck of the woods, wasn't it? And I had I'd had a migraine all day, mm. and I don't get them often, but when I get them, they are brutal and it's still floppy. Yeah, yep. <laughs> and uh, it was hurting me, like my head was hurting and stuff, and where we'd been was loud, which I don't think helped. But all the way home, I mean, it's like 80% lanes in it. Yeah. So you're driving and, you, you know, you were driving well, not comment, you know, commenting on your driving, but we're going round and up and up and over the hill and, and it just knocked me sick. And then I was, we were on literally. Technically, it's, it's round the corner from my you. street. Yeah. yeah. And it was literally about a mile away, not even a mile. And, um, yeah, I was like, Tony, you're going to have to pull over. You're going to have to pull over because the window had come down, hadn't it? As soon as the window came down, I'm like, here we go. Oh, here we bad. go. I've done so well. I think it was like, you know that thing when you need like a pillar away and you open your front door and you're like, oh shit, I yeah. need to go. I think it was like that because I was like, right, I can pretty much see, not far off see my house here. It's that close. Your body's already my in bod- that mode. My body's hit the your home mode because in my, my brain, has, my brain's gone, right, you're home now, you're all right. <clears throat> and then I, oh man, that was bad. Because I'm not a good puker, because some people could just be sick and they just go, like, right, and that's it. You were like somehow the exorcist. I, I'm always like that though. It's like, ruthless. It's horrible. And I've always been like that. And it it seems like, like I'm, it's not, I, I do that thing that people do where like I be sick. And I keep being sick afterwards, and I'm like retching for ages. Nothing's even there, and it's it's painful. It hurts. It's horrible. And um, there's no reason to this story. It's just because you mentioned throwing up, and I've done it recently. Um, but I mean, like, as a non-drinker, I'm not one of these people that's used to. Because some people just go, "I'll just go make myself throw up, and so then I feel better." It. I cannot yeah, do that. No. It's been years since I've. <clears throat> I'm sure people don't want to hear of like. Oh, it's been it has been years, but, uh, but I yeah, I, I was just there like glove compartment. Do you want, do you want a tissue? Want a tissue? <laughs> but just, the thing is, I'm conscious because I know you've got a weak stomach for other people puking as well. I know, and I because I'm exactly the same. I used to be fine, not fine with like yay puke, but like. <laughs> I used to be all right with it. Like, I never used to have much of a weak stomach, but now, mate, like, if there's, like, little things make me wretch, like, if there's a bit of, like, you know, like floppy wet bread, I'd say, <laughs> right. like, in the bread. <laughs> yeah. Floppy wet bread. It, say, like, you know, you're doing the dishes and, like, 
your hand touches a bit of, like bleh. no if i'm taking the bins out like you put the put the bin in the big bin outside bin bag in and then it's you know because they only come every two weeks now it's yeah. filling up a bit and you push it down and you get like a <laughs> you get like a waft of air that goes and ah oh, no, no, i've got such a weak stomach now but that that um where i puked it was there for about two weeks <laughs> Every time I drive past them, I was just like... Still a stain there. That um, was bad. That's the most ill I've been. And that was genuine illness, that. That wasn't just like, oh, I've got a migraine when it's a headache. And no, that was... That was bad. All right, it's us, the Turnstile 2. Just wanted to let you know about the podcast sponsor, which is Circa 88. Check out circa88football.com for your football shirt needs. Uh, they've got loads in stock, shirts from all around the world, ones that are really hard to get hold of, like this Mexico 1999 shirt that was used only in Confederations Cup. It's lovely that, isn't it? And you can get 20% off. If you use the code TURNSTYLE88 at the checkout, you'll get 20% off your order, and that's for everything on the site. And also, if you give them a follow on Twitter and Instagram at Circa88Football, and again, don't forget to use that uh, code TURNSTYLE88 for your 20% off. Thank you. Enjoy the show. With, with, the, with the kind of gipping thing, just so I've been watching. <laughs> this is going to sound very yeah. I watch videos of uh, people just going. Um, I've started watching that Feyenoord documentary on Disney. How the hell is this a link? Because the second episode starts off with the players getting COVID tests, and you know the swab at the uh, back of the throat. Bleh. Yeah, and you can. And the thing is. So the, they're stood there and the camera's like right on, on them and then they've got the doctor or whoever and they're going in with this swab, like with the players and you can see them just going, Bleh. but then you're watching like, Bleh. it's horrible. <laughs> because you know yourself how, or like the, the rod up the nose and you're just like, Ugh, Ugh, this make, is make not. Your eyeball pop out sort of thing. It's horrid. When I've been saying to you, it's very much like what's and all. I need to watch it. It does look really good. And Fire Order, one of those teams that really interests me, mainly because of the fan base. Yeah. Being seems, honest. But obviously, seems. like as a club in the history, the players that they've kind of had come and, and go over the years. I messaged you and it's like, I'm really enjoying this. But one of the, there's just a clip from when <coughs> they won the European Cup in 1970, which obviously they beat, they beat us. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I think off the back of that, the club has a, a good friendship, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think it was any like that, any sort of biff no, or like animosity there. And I was watching it, and I think it's during the last season. And Dick Advocates, the manager, now as a Celtic fan, <clears throat> and of those years when he brought in half the Dutch team, and I'm watching it, I'm like, I shouldn't like him. But I quite like him in this. Yeah. Like, he seems... I mean, that's not to say if you manage your rival team, no, you know, some of the times they're they're all right. They're all right. Some people aren't. Yeah, but, I mean, I'm kind of going through that at the minute. Yeah. Former manager of Liverpool. And it's like people will say to me about... So when watching football and they'll have, like, Ali McCoy, and it's like, well, you must hate Ali McCoy. It's like... I quite like him. I like Annie McQuist a lot. Yeah. He seems um he seems like a, a a decent bloke by all accounts and as a pundit, he's brilliant. Yeah. I think he's the best. Yeah. I'm very critical of pundits, but Ali McQu if Ali McQuist's on punditry and commentary, I'm like, yeah, I'll watch this. Even if it's a game I'm not asked about, but he's commentating, I'll watch it. But yeah, from watching that documentary, it um really <coughs> makes me want to go and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, want to go and see them. Um, and we'll I know it. we we, we'll we spoke we spoke about like a few episodes ago about kind of bucket lists and places to go. That's a new one that I'm I'm yeah. I'm kind of throwing in there, along with uh, San Siro. Obviously, um, you you you're donning a very jazzy. I'll uh, show it off for the camera, shall I? Yeah, look at those sleeves. Dem sleeves. Lovely Maldini. The sleeves are like Michael Owen, 1998, when he had a short sleeve. Or George Campos. Yeah, George Campos. It's like, the thing is, though, they're meant to be long. Michael Owens were meant to be short sleeves, but he's just got 
alarm, so they kind of came halfway down. That's when all the shirts were in XL, regardless. Yeah, you yeah you bought it in <coughs> small, but the sleeves were like yeah. still down to your wrist. Yeah, um, we'll go to Feyenoord. I think that that's um, very easily achievable, and their stadiums, I think, also going to be knocked down as well. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah we'll get it done quick. I think well. The, the documentary does highlight their financial woes they've currently got. Mm. So, I'd, But you find this with, um, with teams. It's like <coughs> with Real Madrid and Barcelona. It's like, oh, we're skinned, we've got no money. It's like, but you, you're spending hundreds of millions on a renovation. Yeah. Which you don't have money for. Um, but, yeah, I think I think the... Is it Decoit? De, De the name of the stadium? So it's like... It, or the nickname, yeah. which, which I found out during watching that documentary. It means something like the bathtub. <laughs> it's something like that. Um, That's why they've never had any players with leprosy, because <laughs> their arms and legs will fall off. <laughs> Imagine that is our new signing. Aunt. Oh. Hold the shirt up. It's like a cat. I've got no arms. Yeah, this is going to be a, well, a pain with insurance. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to claim a leg back. Well, at least you got legs. Okay, right. Let's make your debut. He goes <laughs> from kickoff, just yeah. plays the boys. Oh, he's, yeah. he's, yeah. not, he's not on throw ins. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like him. Um, like his arm go Like, you know, when you kick a ball and your shoe falls off and <laughs> goes flying, but just the, the ball and his arm have gone into the box. And um, <clears throat> in Monty Python, Holy Grail, you with like the Black Knight. <laughs> it's basically what you You know, when they're Champions League and they have the line up, so it'd just be like that. <laughs> Listen, they make. What the, which Monty Python do they represent? It's um, Life of Brian. It's a spare penny for an old ex leper. Like, what do you mean an ex leper? I used to be. I'm all right now. Ill, sir. <laughs> By who? Uh, Jesus, sir. <laughs> Ready to do gooder? <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> it's that little hop little thing bounce. he does. Yeah, that'll be uh, the new Fire Nord signing. He play for Fire Nord now. They don't play in a bathtub. Yeah. <laughs> At least it'll be clean. Um, I've been watching stuff recently. There's a documentary on Netflix that I thoroughly recommend. It's not football. It's called... Uh, there's a fly there. Shall I... Did I just miss the Miyagi? No, it's weird. No, it's there. Red. Um, <clears throat> I have to get the chopsticks out. So it's called Untold Crime and Penalties. And it's about a hockey team in... Um, Connecticut. So the guy, basically, this guy is a he's he's got a number of businesses, but his main one that he operates from is waste disposal, and he's like the king of waste disposal. Who has a son called AJ, and he has mafia ties. Supposed Sound, sounds familiar. Sounds a bit, a little bit Sopranosy. Um. So yeah, basically he's this mafia connect, mob connected guy, and his son played ice hockey. He wanted him to play, he like wanted him to get into NFL, but he he watched Mighty Ducks, and he's like that for me changed everything. I just wanted to be involved in ice hockey, so I started playing, and he was, um, I think he says like you know I wasn't much of a big deal at school. He was like, I mean, the video footage of him when he's younger, he's like a bit, <laughs> bit geeky. Do you know what I mean? So he got into ice hockey and he was just like fighting and bit hard hits and it shows the the hit that it was. So basically he hit somebody clean but a hard hit and he goes down and he's basically fucked his leg. He does something to his leg and he's on crutches and he's been told basically you'll never play ice hockey again. And he was gutted. Like we would be if we got told can never play football again at 16, 17. <clears throat> yeah, I got told I'll never play ice hockey again. I've... Because yeah. you don't know how to play. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you don't know how to skate for yeah. a start. Um, have, you ever, have you ever tried that? Can you ice skate? Yeah. Like, I can't skate backwards. You know, when you see them and like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I can skate forwards. I don't need a penguin. Can you stop? You don't need a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can, I, I can hold my own, I think. Yeah. I can go and, I can go round without making we'll go a complete... Sometime. Make ice. a video of turnstile, turnstile on ice. I told you I can we'll ice do skate. It. We'll we'll get some little thingy mics, 
And we'll, we'll, do, we'll, we'll get some little penguins. <laughs> we'll record a podcast on ice. No one's doing that. No. Nobody in the podcast game is doing podcasts on ice. We'll do that. That's that's a, that's one for the ideas. <laughs> I'll be board. like Mark Fowler. <laughs> <laughs> Todd yeah, Carty. Todd Carty when he goes like that. <laughs> we'll put that video clip in. Um, so, yeah, so he gets told, basically, you can't you can't play ice hockey. And he, understandably, he's gutted. And, but also, he's got a very rich dad uh, who... Of course he does. He's he's, he's in the, the he's worst in, disposal in, business. His, his dad's a bin man. Yeah. Um, so, as any good bin man would do if their son couldn't play ice hockey anymore, he buys him an hockey, a hockey team. It's a place in... Connect- I think it's called Danbury, if I remember correctly. So he buys... I don't know if the rink was already there. I, th- I assume the rink was already there, but it was used for, like public sessions and it wasn't an ice hockey rink I, I think I don't think they built it but <clears throat> he buys this this hockey team and appoints the 17 year old as general manager but this this 17 year old is like you know like the the, the offspring pretty fly for a white guy is he wearing Idiot. the wearing the fubu and he's the got like, yeah he's got like fubu with sleeves like mine here dead big with like you know, like Rockaway jeans, three quarters with big, massive Osiris trainers on a sideways cap yeah. chain, doing all all that. It and couldn't look more white, as white as white gets. Mighty white bread personified. So he's, but 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 also like his dad still like he's given given it to somebody. His dad still has a role in it. I was gonna say they called <clears> them <throat> the Mighty Whites. <laughs> yeah, they're called the the Danbury Trashers. Which is amazing. So they've got like their shirt. I, I'm assuming the dad picked that name. I it makes sense, doesn't it? I, I never actually made that connection um, because he's a, a bin man, but um, a legit bin man, a at legit that. bin man at that. And their their uh, badge was sick. It was like a like dusty bin, <laughs> like <laughs> it's like a big bin with a hockey stick, looking all mean and that. Did they have a mascot? Like an yeah, actual, like, like a guy a- in the in the bin thing, not just like the. A steel bin that they have in the wrestling, just put on someone like Oscar the Grouch yeah, or something. I was say it like Oscar. But um, so like, without revealing too much of the documentary, because obviously I'm re- recommending you and whoever's listening to this to go watch it. But to to sum up what it's like, they um, he gets like a guy in, like an agent, to to, to sign players because obviously it's a non-existent team, so they have to bring in players. And the first person that they sign. They they speak to this agent and they say, look, we want to be like the bad boys of ice hockey. And he goes, right, I know the guy. Here he is and shows him a photo. Big bird. <laughs> and then, <laughs> speaking of bird, is in the right ballpark because he's doing bird at the time. So he's he's in an orange jumpsuit and, hung, and handcuffs, this guy. And they're like, who the fuck is he? And they're like, oh, he's in prison for this, blah, blah, blah. But he'll be out. He's like an enforcer, a goon. And um, they go on to sign other players and stuff, but it goes into like the FBI investigation into them and the money and the payment. But basically on the the opening day, so they don't know, like the town's never had ice hockey before. A lot of them don't watch it. They have, the documentary speaks to everybody involved, including like a couple of fans who had never watched a game until they went. You know the goon? The film. No, I mean the actual guy. The guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Did he, did he do other kind of goon-like work outside of the rink? I don't know, but I guess so as he was in prison. Because I, I don't know if he's... Don't, for, for big hits in hockey... You don't go to jail for no. it normally. Um, but he, yeah, so they get him in, and it's the opening night, first night. But because he's a 17-year-old in charge, there's a lot of media attention. There's like NBC and, and, and all these big TV channels are covering it in the news and stuff and it's big deal espn i think they say it there and the the, the 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 dad guy speaks to the goon and he says right at face off puck drop first first one i want you to drop the gloves and go at it from the start and that's what he does and they go like he, you can see him lining up and they're like the commentary is going, ah, oh, and here we are, such a big occasion, ready for the big puck drop. And he's literally two seconds in and he's flicking yeah. the gloves off and he's going at it with whoever that's closest to him, basically. 
and it it cuts to the fans and the, it's it's silent. They don't know how to. They don't know that it's allowed. To, yeah, like they don't know that it's because unless you watch it, you would be like, "What the fuck?" But like, because obviously fighting's allowed in hockey. They it it happens, and he he beats the shit out of this guy. And there's blood everywhere and all all over the ice and stuff like that. And as he's getting ejected, he's like, way to the crowd. And all the crowd just kind of go, yay. You know, like in a cartoon where something happens and all at the same time, they'll kind of go, yay. And then... So, so like the, the mafia boss guy just holds a sign up. <laughs> saying cheer. cheer. And um, like he looks up and he's like putting the thumb up to him. But they also have a guy from the um, the league. The, it's the UHL, I think it was. And... <clears throat> he says something to the effect of, like, fighting in hockey is fine. It's part of the game. He says, a team that fights a lot would fight two or three times a game a couple of times, not every game. Yeah. But these were fighting seven or eight times every single game that they played, and they became, like, the bad boys of hockey. And he loved it, the owner. So, like, they do it, and he's like, so long as we keep winning and you keep playing like that, I'll keep paying you. And obviously he's paying him in envelopes and from various different companies and stuff like that. But the investigate it goes into the investigation of it and like how the team lifespan kind of goes because it's a very short lifespan, unsurprisingly. But like they're like you know like the like the baddies yeah. from the hurricanes or something, like the black kit sort of those kind of things. And it's like imagine that in football now. Yeah. It's so funny. I just have this vision in my head because of how you describe the lad. So, like, opening game, it's like, oh, you know how in, in North American sports they'll sing, like in hockey, they'll sing the yeah, national yeah. anthem. Yeah, the anthem in that. And it's like, I'm going to get my favourite rapper in. <laughs> I'm going to get Fat Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Just comes on and does lean back instead of the national anthem. Can you That'd imagine someone like Fat Joe doing the national anthem? Oh, you mean Fat Joe doing... The anthem, the, the, you know. Ah, oh, imagine Lil John doing it. <laughs> <laughs> he would probably like it with the money. How long, how long it would take to him to get through it? <laughs> how much? About fifty dollars. Uh, oh, say can you see? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> like a crunk remix of the, the national anthem. <laughs> I remember him on Nick Cannon's Wild and Out, right? Which is not something I've I've watched a lot of, admittedly, because it is mostly garbage. But like, have you ever seen it? No. So it's a bit like um, a very commercialized rap battle sort of thing. But they have like celebrity guests on it quite often, and they'll have like um, a bit where they have to basically redo. A kid's song or nursery rhyme, right? So like it'll be it'll be like I don't know like Humpty Dumpty, but it'll have like whoever it is like Jada Kiss, and it'll go on about it'll make it about guns or or something. Do you know what I mean? Like they do whatever, and I've not watched it recently or enough to give you a great example. But but I remember the Humpty Lil Dumpty, John one. Humpty Dumpty sat in a while. Humpty Dumpty got shot off the wall. <laughs> there we go, <laughs> and then. Um, so Lil John's on it, and what has Lil John always done in everything that he's ever produced? He's done a crunk beat and just gone, "What? Yeah!" And that is so he had like people with him. I, I don't it might have been the Yin Yang Twins or something. I don't know who it was that was with him, and they made him re remix, and he had to rewrite "London Bridge Is Falling Down," and it literally had like a beat, and he just went. London Bridge is falling down. What? <laughs> falling down. What? Falling down. Okay. And that was all he did <laughs> was ad lib. <laughs> is falling down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's all he did. But like bouncing about like this with like, like his, his like goblet, his crunk goblet thing. That oh, he like diamond encrusted. Yeah. With his, what did he have? Crunk juice was his, <laughs> was his, was his drink. And uh, yeah. Hey, please uh, tell me DMX did one. I don't know. Probably. Blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. <laughs> blah. Yeah, so, naked attraction. <laughs> Getting your dongs out on Getting telly. Getting your dongs out on telly. What? I mean, 
what I was going to say, like, how much would it cost you to get your dick out and tell him that? But, like, not because I'm... I was going to ask you that earlier, but... <laughs> not because not I'm rich, but just out of curiosity. Ha, what's the most comfortable you could be? What illness or impairment is the, is the furthest you would go to put on national telly? Leprosy. Leprosy. <laughs> <laughs> It's, you, you just, just go you on. You a naked <laughs> attraction with leprosy. It's like, why did you not choose him? Well, he's, well, he's Willie fell off. <laughs> it's on the floor. It's like Mr. Pop. It's going bunk. It's like, oh, not again. I pick it up, but my arms, my arms are off, uh, off northern Greece. <laughs> Floating <laughs> so when I swam, when I swam, I swam from when I escaped from Leper Island, like the fish man of Alcatraz, <laughs> my arms are still up there, so I can't even pick it up. Can I pick it up with my toes? Oh, they've gone. <laughs> We're, I mean, are we going to get in trouble for this? Is this disabled against leprosy? I don't know enough about it other than the fact that you've got it in your knee. Yeah, from I don't falling even, over. I, th- I don't even I think I just spat now. I've not the plane. I don't know if it still exists or not. <laughs> if it doesn't exist, can you laugh at it? I mean, you can you can laugh at something that doesn't exist in it. I mean, within within reason, within reason, like you can't laugh at you know like a dead person because they don't yeah. exist anymore. But so um, probably can. But <clears throat> um, is leprosy still around? Leprosy is no longer something to fear. Today, the disease is rare. It is also treatable. Most people lead a normal life during and after treatment. We can officially laugh at it. So it's okay to laugh at. Although, today, about 208,000 people worldwide are infected with leprosy. So it is still around. (laughs) So, so yeah. Ah, So. That's gonna sig- that's gonna cut our views by two hundred and eight thousand <laughs> next week. But would you be prepared? <coughs> Sorry, I got really dry throat. Um, to go on TV, I don't even go to the doctors when my mouth won't shut. <laughs> so, I mean, like, not just the doctors, but like including a dating show or just TV in general. What's the furthest? Would, would you go on like a TV show with your top off? <clears throat> I, if I knew, if I knew, in I context, you, not just I, on the news, just if cuts it, the topless man in Sheffield, <laughs> and it's just you, just like with your thumb up, jeans and no top on. Do you want to date him? I imagine you <laughs> go on naked attraction, and it goes. Da-na-na-na. That naked guy's got a pair of New Balance trainers on and a pair of jeans. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a pair of Primark jeans on there. What's going on? Everyone's got their cock out. <laughs> you just got... <laughs> He's got jeans on. I'm not comfortable in my skin, sorry. So, and it goes, up. you've got a big puffer jacket. <laughs> a North Face. <laughs> like proper road manned up. <laughs> yeah. All like that guy on the moped. The Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Saltney Spider-Man. With Saltney Spider-Man, yeah. We need to get to the bottom of that still. Like, I don't know what I'd do, but to be fair, I had a massive swollen bollock that I had to have operated on that I talked about on this podcast. Yeah. So I'm quite open, but I don't know if I'd show everybody. <laughs> There's a difference between showing the doctor and showing Channel 4. Good, because I don't want to have to be, like, pixelating. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> just blur ear out. That could be the thumbnail, just me with a blurred out twonky. Um, I've got to do the... Oh, Shocked face, shit. mouth open. Oh, keep your open mouth a bit further away, please. <laughs> um, for my pixelated penis. <clears throat> I don't know what I'd do. I don't know. Like, do you think some of them make it up? I think she can't because they've got symptoms, haven't they? Do you think? Because, like, if you, like, say we did it, we talked about it now, right? Yeah. On here. And we, and we put the podcast out and someone goes, oh, you should apply to go on it. What do you mean apply? Like, oh, we'll do a challenge. And the loser has to go on embarrassing bodies with a fake ailment. But, like, you couldn't really fake it. You can't fake a poorly arsehole. No. Because they'll go, well, let's have a look. 
Do you know what I mean? You've clearly just set it on fire. <laughs> you've clearly just, um, like, flicked it before you've come in. <laughs> why, 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 why has he got Alex was here in a compass on your bum cheek? I don't know. I just went to sleep and that's how it's come out. Oh, God. No, I, I, I wouldn't do anything like that. What TV shows would you go on? Because, like... <clears throat> Catchphrase. <laughs> Catch. I'd be sick at catchphrase. I'm. That's the one. You know, like sometimes people go, "Oh, I think it'd be great on like who wants to be a millionaire." Like, well, so I can win that. Yeah. I just, I just choose not to. I'll, yeah. I give, I give people a chance. But catchphrase, I, I am dead good at getting catchphrase, and I always get it quicker than the people on the actual show. I used to have the game, the board game, which you just had like cards, kind of like. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Say what you see. Say what you see. Um. Yeah. We. We had the that and like blockbuster blockbusters. Bit of Bob Holness. <laughs> There's a little dance, wasn't they? Was yeah, the blockbusters. Yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, some of that. Sure yeah, that's not Wigfield Saturday night. <laughs> you know, just getting getting confused. Uh, Bob Holness confused with Tim Curry and <laughs> doing the fair, time warp. To be fair, like. All those kind of dances, like the Macarena, they all kind of like... Is this a real do, one or is this... do like a is flap this your a, arms about. a Bridlington thing, like I want some chips? No, it's a thing. Really? Yeah. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. We can put the video in, can't we, if it's real? Um, Blockbusters. Quiz show dance. Yeah, TV show. Dance. The fist hand jive. And they meet another new contestant. Let's hope it's going to be an exciting match. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you there. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you were bang on. Yeah. Why did I not remember that? Wow. We'll put a video clip of that because we'll nick that off YouTube. Um. But yeah, I think I'd be good at uh, catchphrases. The one I do think I'd be all right at that. And if I was going to go on any, do you know, right, tipping point. Yeah. Even though I hate Ben Shepherd, the weird little cuboid. I think that that has the easiest questions. So it's got dead easy questions with dead stupid people on it. Yeah. And it's a massive 2P machine. Say for me, growing up by the seaside. Growing up by the seaside, you'd be sick at that bit. But like, you know when you're watching it and they're like, <clears throat> they get a question and it'll be like, I don't know, like which England player called Wayne Is has, the, top has the most <laughs> yeah. goals, like most goals by any Wayne in an England kit. And that's like Wayne Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wayne, Wayne, Wayne Slob. Li- Wayne, Wayne Sleep. <laughs> Wayne Sleep. <laughs> Wayne Slob. <laughs> Um, but then, like they they get it wrong, so the other person has has a go, and then that they they press the button at the wrong time, and it just mate, it, and the coin just point. lands on top of the others aside, and you're like, oh come on, you pressed it, or they'll go like, oh I'll go for drop zone four, please Ben. It's like you can see the gold star over there. Yeah, like, what are you doing? But it's when you get the ones <clears throat> where there'll be like a guy, and he's like, you know, when you can pick, is it like? On the top, yeah, yeah, like, like one, one, two, two or three, three for how difficult they are. And he'll be like, oh, I'll go for, it'll be like sport one. <laughs> and you, But I, I mean, there yeah. may be people that watch this or listen and they're like, well, I don't like sport. What are you listening to this for? Because um, we speak about sports so much. Because it's such an in-depth sport analysis. But do you know when you're like, I don't trust you. There's now, something about now, do you. know you. what, right? <clears throat> if I went on, If I went on that, Say something I'm not particularly great with history, right? I don't, I, I know a few things, but I'm not great with history. But also, it's multiple choice. If, I'm, if I don't, if you're rubbish, if you don't know anything about sport, if you know nothing about sport, so you go for a one, right? If you don't know anything about sport, you're not going to get one right, let alone the difficult one, because you don't know. It's multiple choice. Well, yeah. You're picking a best one of one of three choice. At best, in it, it's literally like right. Well, and plus you can use common sense because they always put a stupid answer in there, so it's fifty-fifty, really. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It, 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 you know, you would get Wayne Bridge, Wayne Rooney, 
you know, wane sleep. And you get people like, I didn't know what the answer is. I just went down the middle. I went down the middle. It's like, uh, why? Um, unless it's numerical and you go for the middle number, which is whatever. But yeah, I think that would be the easiest one. Um, my cousin went on Wipeout, on Total Wipeout. Oh, nice. In um, Argentina, that's filmed. Yeah, because they don't care about health insurance. There's no there. health insurance, <laughs> no health and safety, so that's why they film it there. Because they did it over here. You get someone you to go over there and everything. Yeah, yeah, you fly over there. So when you go over there... You I might just go to... And then just so I can go to a <coughs> Boca game. It's, I don't know how close it's filmed. I can't remember. But, like, you have to go... And they pick plonkers as well. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, my cousin... Am I right in thinking all, like, the American one, they're all filmed in Argentina? They're like, all filmed in Argentina. Yeah. Like the whole, everywhere that Around films the world. it broadcasts it, films it in the same place in Argentina. Um, And so my cousin went on it, and like I said, you have to be a bit of a plonker, because when you see them and they're like, oh, here's, here's Tony, he's 35 and from Sheffield, they come out and they all, it's like, they'll have, like, fucking brave art face paintings, go, freedom, and then... Dive down the slide you know thing I'd at the do? beginning. I, I pretend I'll, I was in like Takeshi's castle <laughs> and I'd just run out in like, do you know, 80s tracksuit and just be like, Gambadamas! And then just kind yeah. of jump. Be like, what? Gambadamas. What's that? Something like I'll do my best or something. Oh, is it really? Something. I thought you were being casually no, no. racist. No, no, there's that. Kanichiwa. <laughs> so my cousin, I've, 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 I've Pokemon. <laughs> um, She's Pocket Monster. Thanks for that. Um, so my cousin, um, I don't know how, and I certainly don't know where you would do this in the UK, but she got into bobsledding, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know. She's amazing. She does loads of um, different things. She's played rugby for like... Does loads of bobsledding. Bobsled she's played rugby for Wales and, and, and all this sort of stuff. But when she went to uni, she kind of got into like the rowing side, all that sort of stuff. And um, somehow got into bobsledding for a bit. And she also doesn't give a shit. She's hilarious, right? So she went for your apply and stuff. And she went for like an interview. And they were like, what would be your your thing, like your gimmick? So there's a film that you've never seen about bobsledding. That's true. I know exactly. You've never seen Cool Runnings, which for a big avid bobsled fan like yourself, I do find. Well... Because I've I've said to you before, as a kid, that's that like as a as a five year old with a mullet, <laughs> I wanted. Oh, oh, <laughs> I really really wanted to be a bobslayer, bobslayer, slayer, bobslayer. Just slaying people called Bob. <laughs> yeah, it's like Monkhouse, <laughs> Bob Holness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, some of that you yeah. prick. <laughs> <laughs> Have a pee, please, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> With your ninja sword slaying him. So, hey, I'll have my tea now, Bob. <laughs> kind of spilt coffee on me. Bob it's, not even, it's not even tea. Um, um, Bob, Bob Mortimer can live. Oh, oh. done. R.I.P. in R. I. Peace. In peace. Sorry, David, mate. David Dunn. David Dunn, get him back on the shelf. There we go. Wrecking the place, slaying all those bobs. We'll go with Sledder just for the safety of people called Bob. Yeah. Um, um, that's what I wanted to do. And people are like, oh, is it because of Cool Run? Like, I've never seen the never film. Seen it. What do you mean? It's like, no, I watched the Winter Olympics, you know, the one that they were in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought it was like a little space rocket. So they um, they asked her that, and she said, oh, well, you know, in Cool Runnings, which you don't know, but they knew because th everyone's seen it apart from you. Basically, there's a guy called Sanka, and he has a lucky egg. And before they do the slay people call Bob, he goes, oh, kiss me lucky egg. Kisses the egg and puts it back in his, his suit. Puts it, <laughs> puts, puts it back in his scrotum. His love egg. His <laughs> love egg. Puts it back up his bum yeah. and carries on. But um, So she goes, well, I've got, and she had like a rubber egg. And she she come out, if I remember correctly, she come out and she said what they said in Cool Runnings. She's like, feel the rhythm, feel the ride. Come on now, it's wipeout time. Got this rubber egg, kissed it, put it in a pocket and went head first down the slide at the beginning. And then like they win 10 grand or whatever they win. You, she, she, you sign like an NDA to say you're not allowed to tell people how you got on. Yeah. <clears throat> but she didn't win her episode. But all the heats and stuff like that, she was like one of the best. So when they had like a best of the best episode, she went back again. Right. Where they had all the people who do all the, the trials in the best times and stuff like that. So she was actually on it twice. 
I wouldn't want to go on wipe out. It's, I'd give it a go. I think it'd be quite. It'd be fun. funny with your mates. Yeah, but to go on telly, get nailed in the bollocks by that wall, punching <laughs> the, the thing, and uh, I don't know. There's easier ways to, to to win a game show than that. Yeah, especially if you've got leprosy. Yeah, imagine you just that. chop you in half. You bounce on the ball thing, and then your arm just flings off. And anyway, should we uh, call it that? Yeah, that's a good place to end it because the memory card is almost full. Oh, still floppy. <laughs> bye so, bye. Yeah. Uh, do everything. Give us like, follow, likes, follow, subscribe, money. Show and, your mum and uh, tell your dad. Logan, Paul, and Jake Paul, we're coming after you.